All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is equal to three. So as you guys probably already know, pi is an irrational number, meaning it doesn't have a whole number value and it's actually equal to 3.14159 and on and on and so forth forever. So that's why it's an irrational number. It's to just don't stop going. So in this video, I'm going to be proving to you guys that pi is actually equal to 3 and not the irrational number that we all know it is. So what I'm first going to do is start with the statement x is equal to pi plus 3 over 2. So all I'm doing is I'm giving a value to a variable which is completely illegal, which is completely legal. So now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2. So I get 2 times x is equal to pi plus 3 over 2 times 2. Now, 2 times x is equal to 2x. So I get 2x is equal to, these two 2s cancel out, pi plus 3. So I get 2x is equal to pi plus 3. And now from here, I'm going to multiply both sides by pi minus 3. So I have pi minus 3 times 2x is equal to pi plus 3 times pi minus 3. Now, pi plus 3 times pi minus 3 I'm going to distribute the pi so I get pi squared plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, which they just simply cancel out, plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, these two cancel out, and then I have minus 9 at the end. So this is, I can just say this is pi squared minus 9, and for my left hand side, I can distribute the 2x so I get 2x pi minus 6x. And now from here, I'm going to add x squared on both sides. So I have x squared plus 2x pi minus 6x is equal to pi squared minus 9 plus x squared. And let me just reorder this real quick. I'm going to write this as x squared minus 6x plus 9, so I'm going to add 9 on both sides, is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x, so I'm going to subtract 2 pi x on both sides, and at the end, plus pi squared. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared. And now x squared minus 6x plus 9, this factor is out into x minus 3 squared. And x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared is the same thing as x minus pi squared. So I have x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus pi squared. And now, I want to cancel these two squares, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So now the square root of x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 3, and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus pi. So I get x minus 3 is equal to x minus pi. So now I'm going to cancel these two x's out by subtracting x on both sides. So now I get negative 3 is equal to negative pi, and now if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get pi is equal to 3. So there you have it. I just proved that pi is equal to 3. So now where did I go wrong? Because obviously we know that pi is not equal to 3. So where did I go wrong? Well, I actually went wrong on this step right here where I said that the square root of x minus 3 squared and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus 3 and x minus pi, respectively. Well, this is actually not true, 
the square root of x minus 3 squared isn't equal to x minus 3, is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And same goes with the square root of x minus pi squared. It's not equal to x minus pi. It's equal to the absolute value of x minus pi. So the reason this is so important is because now I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi or also negative x minus 3 is equal to positive x minus pi since we're taking the absolute value of these two. So if we want to solve x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi, we're going to have to first distribute the negative sign. So I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x plus pi. So now if I add x on both sides, it's to cancel out. So I get 2x is equal to 3 plus pi. And x is equal to 3 plus pi over 2, which going back is what we started with. So there you have it. That is something really important to know that the absolute value is, or sorry, the square root of a square isn't just the normal version, it's the absolute value of that. All right, so in this problem, I have x minus two to the power of three is equal to negative eight. So to solve this, I'm gonna first start by adding eight on both sides. So then these two cancel out and I get x minus two to the power of three plus eight is equal to zero. Now from here, I can rewrite eight as two to the power of three. So I have x minus two to the power of three plus two to the power of three is zero. And the reason I did that was because if I have something in the form a to the power of three plus b to the power of three, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is equal to x minus 2 and b is equal to 2. So I get x minus 2 plus 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 2 times x minus 2 plus 2 squared. And this is equal to 0. Now we can simplify this. So negative 2 and positive 2 cancel out. So I get x times x minus 2 squared is the same thing as x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then negative 2 times x minus 2, I can distribute the negative 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And finally, I have this plus 2 squared, which is equal to 4. Now from here, we can simplify what's in the parentheses. So I get x times x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 2x plus 4 plus 4. So this simplifies to x squared. Negative 4x minus 2x is negative 6x. And now I'm left with plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is plus 12. This is equal to 0. Now from here, this gives me two equations. I get x is equal to 0, and I get x squared minus 6x plus 12 is equal to 0. So x equals 0, this is already a solution. And x squared minus 6x plus 12 is equal to 0. To solve this, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is 6, and c is 12. So if I plug these values in to my quadratic formula, I get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 6 squared, which is 36, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 12, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. 
and this is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 48 over 2 times 1, which is 2. And this is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 48, which is negative 12 over 2. Now from here, your negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 12 times the square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1 is the same thing as the imagined number i. So I get x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 12 i over 2. Now the square root of 12, this is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 3, right? Which is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So this is equal to 2 root 3. So I get x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 3 i over 2. Now if I divide my terms here by 2, I get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus, these two cancel out, square root of 3i. So my three solutions are x is equal to negative 3 plus square root of 3i, x is equal to negative 3 minus square root of 3i, and x is equal to 0.